I hope you're doing really well. Uh, so today we're doing a vlog. Um, I'm challenging myself. I find it really difficult to do these kinds of videos, but I do love watching them. Um, so over on Instagram, a few of you, a few of you, <laughs> a few of you have asked um, if I could share a few things behind the scenes in terms of how I do my lesson planning, how I get ready for September. Um, so I thought I would do that today. Um, I'm actually just about to start planning some lessons for Year Ten. Um, uh, it's the sixth of August, by the way. So we're about halfway through. Our summer holiday um, and it's just gone nine o'clock so I'm going to be spending the morning doing some work um, getting myself ready planning some lessons getting resources organized so then when I'm back at school I can just get stuff printed and ready to go so I hope you find this video useful um, and I hope you're enjoying your summer as well um, one thing that's an essential for me is having um, a cup of tea or some coffee or something um, I love having um, something to drink while I'm working and I've also already set my phone on airplane mode switched off my Wi-Fi um, so that my phone gives me no distractions um, and yeah I've put it I put it away in a different room so I don't even see it so that way I can just like completely focus be productive and all I've got in front of me is my laptop which I'm going to show you my to-do list now okay guys so here on Nation um, I've got my little summer 2020 list um, I made a video on my reflections um, of what I want to take with me going forward so if you want to see that video feel free to uh, but yeah I've started to compile a list of stuff to do um, and so today what I'm going to focus on is on the planning side so I've split it into different year groups I've decided that today I want to do year 10 uh, so I think this morning I'm going to try to focus on getting B1 lessons done so that will be the first two weeks um, I don't think that there's really much point in me planning too much um, beyond that I think I'll have time to do that once I start school but I want to get the first two weeks done so I'm going to plan uh, B1 now and I'll show you how I do that I guess something else to just quickly show you is um, I am going to also be making some Google Form quizzes. I don't think I'll do that today, but maybe that's something I can vlog about in the future. So leave me a comment if that's something that you would like to see, how I um, form them, how I assess them, how I structure them, and uh, just everything to do with Google Form quizzes. If that's something you want to know more about, then uh, leave a comment down below. <music> just finished working for about an hour and a half just doing some lesson plans I think I managed to finish two um, and yeah it was really good um, I felt great being back at it I think I missed doing a bit of lesson planning but it took a while to get warmed up and I think also just the nature of planning lessons on my laptop is a bit different to planning lessons on my work computer because I normally do that all at school um, so yeah it's just an interesting process um, I'm just going to take a break now for 15 minutes and just get something to drink, have a bit of food, um, pop into the garden and get some fresh air and then I'll be back here for I think another hour before lunch. I think if I can manage to do another hour and plan maybe lessons three and hopefully four so then all of that unit is completed. Um, but yeah, it's going really well. I'm just having uh, some tangerines. I I put two in there and a couple of energy balls. I made these over the weekend and they are so delicious. They have almonds, shredded coconut and some dates. 
I like to have them as a mid-morning snack, so I make a big batch beforehand. And then I've just refilled my tea. Um, I'm really loving this one, so the Lean Matcha Green from Pucker. Um, it's really, really nice and gives me a bit of um, energy mid-morning. The garden is looking lovely. It's a bit grey outside, actually, uh, but it's not raining and it's a bit warm, but it's looking beautiful. I'm just going to head outside now for a little bit of fresh air. so I just had a bit of lunch and did a bit of reading which was nice and relaxing um, I think I'm going to finish with my lesson planning there um, I ended up being able to plan three lessons out of the four lessons but actually um, one of the lessons I didn't plan um, I've got pretty much prepped um, at school I've got these laminated cards as an activity um, and I think it'll be really straightforward for me to put together so I didn't want to prioritize doing that today um, so I just thought actually before I say goodbye, um, I just wanted to give you guys a few pointers um, in terms of lesson planning just to give you, I don't know, maybe a bit of advice in, in terms of my thought process uh, that supported me with my lesson planning today, um, just in case it, it helps you with whatever you're doing right now. Um, so just to give you a bit of context with that year 10 planning, um, I'm planning a, a topic, a unit essentially, that the students have learnt before, so it's all review, um, which is actually really difficult to plan for because those classes that I'm planning for are new to me, I don't actually even know the students. So it's really difficult to figure out what they're not going to know, what they are going to know, what their conduct is going to be like. Um, how they're going to respond to me, what the pace should be. Um, so not knowing a lot. Um, I typically, in these situations, I typically over plan. And I think um, over planning can be something that is a bit frowned upon because then you, 
you know, you've got just too much to do and you're trying to fit it all in, but I prefer to do it in that way because in the lesson I can quickly adapt depending on what the class is needing. So I've got a bit of a skeleton as to what I need to achieve, but in what I planned and prepped today I've got way more slides than I actually need. Um, so you know, then I can actually rely on them depending on what I end up prioritising in the lesson, if that makes sense. The other thing, apart from over planning in my current situation, is I've had to include um, a bit of time in the first lesson to go over the introduction um, of like classroom rules and behaviour expectations. But I'm a little bit short on time with a whole sequence of lessons in my midterm plan, which um, I made a video, a video about so you can you can see that. Um, and so what I decided to do was actually have all of my rules and uh, classroom behaviour expectations printed on some sticky paper uh, that I'm going to put in every single exercise book so it's ready for students and they don't need to write stuff down or listen to me just repeat myself over and over and over again. Um, and also I just think students on the first few days they're just going to be inundated with this kind of information because a lot of teachers are going through it and I don't want to spend a lot of time on that if I don't need to so then hopefully having that sticky paper in their exercise books is going to help them because it's not going to be temporary, it's going to be something that they're able to re-read um, and refer back to whenever they need to and I can also use that to my advantage, I can ask them to flick back to that um, at a particular point in the lesson and just remind themselves. So I think that might be a really good behaviour strategy. Then just in terms of like how I've structured the lessons um, because I'm probably going to be speeding up that whole section in this video um, if you've seen that um, but I just wanted to outline how I structure the lessons so I think the for any review lesson you really do need to pinpoint what the skill is in that lesson so for the first two lessons that I prepped it's mostly retrieval of keywords so it's using memory um, now the what might be difficult here is that students don't actually remember the information so that's why I've got that contingency plan of having additional slides to explain it to them and to teach it to them if they can't remember uh, or if for whatever reason they don't actually know because they didn't engage with the home learning during COVID-19 or their previous teacher didn't actually cover it in a lot of depth um, like I would normally. Um, so depending on their experience and their knowledge and their memory, I will do a whole bunch of retrieval type questions um, and then I'll look um, at including some practice questions like exam style questions and I'll use my whiteboard in the classroom, I'll get people to discuss, uh, to contribute, to collate answers together and then I'll probably use my visualiser as well. So that part is not too planned in the PowerPoint because I, I'm actually quite a hands-on teacher um, so I will do that as the second part of the lesson and then I'll end with a plenary uh, just to ascertain how they're feeling about the learning objectives and if they are confident or if they feel like they need to spend a bit more time sometimes I include a couple of questions um, that can support students with making that judgment because some students will say that they're really confident but then actually they can't actually do the questions. But I think um, for the most part with the current classes that I'm going to be taking on, I'm just going to get them to reflect and see if they're able to do that correctly um, or not. And then if I need to I can pose some questions and just quickly write them up on the board or just verbally say them and they can write it in their book. And two minutes and if it's correct then they're green and if it's half correct yellow or if they had no idea what to, to, to answer then it's red. So any type of reflection as a plenary I really enjoy doing because it just gives me a stepping stone for the next lesson. Also one final thing is I do like to copy paste different slides to keep that uniformity so um, if you want to have a template that you use so then your titles always look the same, your starter, font, colour, whatever it might be, your extension tasks, your learning objective slide, your end of lesson slide, I quite like to reuse those because it gives a bit of consistency and again it's just a bit of a routine so students know exactly at what point we're at in the lesson and what's expected of them to do. 
So yeah, so I mean those are some pointers of what I um, was focusing on during this lesson planning session. I hope that you enjoyed the video uh, and if you do want more teacher vlog style videos in the future then make sure to give it a thumbs up so that I know. Um, and if you also want to request what type of vlogs I make, um, maybe it's like lesson planning on different types of things or if there's anything that you want me to focus on so I can give my views and advice then just um, pop a comment in the section down below asking for that. Also if you're not subscribed to the channel yet then I'd love for you to subscribe. Um, it would really mean a lot to me especially to just build our community and build all these positive vibes in supporting each other and giving advice to people who want to be teachers or who are new to teaching so I'd really love that support so subscribe. <laughs> and that's it for today's video guys. Um, I will see you next week. Have a joyous and a beautiful day. Bye!